An ally has returned. Hello, hello, Paul Bello here in the Lit RPG Adventures Workshop, a collection of over three dozen advanced RPG tools made with cutting edge AI. And uh, we're working on in the background a new unified world builder. And basically the idea is to generate a world hex map. Um, don't want to repeat everything in the previous video, so we'll jump to the new stuff. Uh, I have added for the biome, in addition to the normal five that we had before, you can mix all of them. You can get a mix of tropical, um, which goes up to temperate, I believe, and then temperate, which either goes down to tropical or up to arctic randomly, and then arctic would go from arctic to temperate. So let's say we want a, um, one of the things I'm working on in the background too is the ability to create and save uh, pretty big worlds. Um, I want to get to at least, you know, 50 by 50 or 100 by 100 even would be cool. Um, so I'm still working on that, but the idea is to, let's do a 68 by, let's go crazy, it's going to probably stall out. Um, we'll keep it uh, the variation is basically running off of height. So if you do more varied, you're going to end up with more mountains and different stuff. Less varied is more of the lowland, uh, flat noise type of deal. Uh, moisture controls uh, whether you see, you know, desert or just regular grassland or whatever. Uh, water level is uh, whether it's, you know, all landmass or like an island. Uh, you can punch lakes into it, you can punch rivers into it, and make the number of uh, factions that you want. So let's go ahead and generate this monster map. And our mini map pops in real quick. Uh, but as you can see, we're going from... Arctic to subarctic uh, to temperate to subtropical to tropical, which I think is kind of cool. Um, we can also do that with a wide. Now, I'm still playing with this. I just uh, got this working. Um, I don't have a lot to show you today that has changed on the front end, um, but I've do done a lot of work to the uh, framework or the skeleton on the back end that uh, enables all this stuff to work together. So uh, we are making progress, even if it doesn't look like it sometimes. Um, let's go ahead and generate this wide one. And you can see it's trying to fit all biomes and only those. So let's change that to uh, mixed temperate and see what we get. And you can see here we go from Arctic down to uh, Savannah. And why is that doing? Like I said, I just put this together, so it might still have some bugs. But hopefully you like the idea. And, uh, ooh, we got a uh, river flowing from the mountain down to the river, as it should be. <laughs> um, kind of, it's kind of addicting, to be honest. Let's get that a little less varied. see what more vary does for us oh there we go so you can play with that it 
as much as you want. And I think what I'm going to do is is not going to save the map other than locally. Um, so you can generate as many as you want. And then once you find one you want, maybe, like I said before, a lock in this map or something. And then uh, it would tie, you know, it would stop the ability to generate a new map, but then you would be able to generate, you know, new world info, kingdoms, cities, etc, etc. So, let's go somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Is that all water? Yeah. Uh, well, too much water. That wasn't even high water, huh? If we... There, that's a little better. But the one thing I was thinking, um, talking about size earlier too, um, you kind of want it to be able to have like a continent with all water around it, not necessarily. Let's turn the lakes down. Uh, like maybe you can control whether the land is here or the land is a continent. That would be a good choice to have. Uh, that one ended up with no water. Oh, changing the wrong things. Two continents, kind of, except you don't have the water. And uh, I like how some other programs, uh, generators, you know, I could probably guarantee and just place, you know, snow tiles, snow mountain tiles or whatever on the top and bottom. Um, so I don't know, I'm still playing with it. Uh, the other thing still a little buggy but we have a little uh, pointer now and when you click you get a little animation and I have tightened up the uh, design a little bit we had all that space there we still got space here but I have an idea for that um, this isn't interactive yet but it might be it's just kind of a placeholder now um, I don't think it is even adding a uh, city image now but it uh, gives you your what do we got a metropolis with a whole bunch of buildings and then you know I'll probably have another add building down here but then we'd have to add it to the map also but the map's not working yet so that is something we will look at when we get there oops <laughs> Uh, we will do a small temple, and you can see it's a little three room, doors are kind of buggy, um, but we can click on a room and zoom in, which is kind of cool. We can download the high res map. Um, I still got to work in the overland description. now. I'm generating cities without overland description, but I'm wondering if I should disallow adding anything <clears throat> until you fleshed out the uh, general description for these seven tiles. That would give these uh, more consistency then. Or if you did the city first, <laughs> you could base the overland description on the city. So what I might have to do is in the back end, just figure out with math uh, what you've done and what you haven't done, and then you know swap it up depending on the uh, situation. Um, did notes for encounters last night. NPCs, I did some notes for NPCs, like do we want them, 
they're not going to always be in one tile. So what I'm thinking is they have a home tile or their base of operations or whatever. And then uh, if you're you know generating content, there's a high chance they're going to be mentioned. But if you want to pull you know person from this tile into a situation down here, I want to be able to view content. That's where this might come in. Uh, view all people, all cities or something. And uh, even though you created him on another home tile, you know, he would still be uh, listed here and available for context uh, when we send information to the LLM. Um, I hope that all made sense. I didn't get a lot of sleep. Um, the back end stuff was kind of a headache, but I think I've uh, powered through most of it. And the map is a lot steadier now. And uh, I hate the straight rivers, though. Um, we're going to have to fix that up a little bit. Uh, what else did I do? Um, factions. I have started to flesh these out. <laughs> and these are going to be, you know, an in-depth thing, I think, which will add context to everything else that you generate. So in addition to the ones that are generated, you know, you'll be able to add new faction, delete faction, and then, uh, you know, generate LLM content including the leader of the faction, the government, how they're set up, how they're run, maybe tiles of influence. Ooh, I didn't put that in there last night, but that's a good one. That way we could tie it to if you're building a city here and this faction has an influence here, they'll be mentioned. But if you're building a city here, they just have you know influence here, so they won't be mentioned up here. But there might be another faction and so on and so forth. Um, I'm kind of rambling now. Like I said, not a lot to uh, show um, that is new that's not in the uh, other videos I've been putting out. But there uh, has been a lot of improvements on the back end, so it's a lot more stable, and that is going to make things easier going forward as we start to tie in this complicated LLM stuff with factions, regions, kingdoms, the world in general, and then cities and people. And, oh, I got some ideas. So I'm going to get back to the workshop. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing and sending me $5 trillion. <laughs> Um, seriously, though, thanks for the uh, support, the attention, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'll be back with more soon. An ally has left the game.